why don't we go ahead and jump into the presentation and I think it's time to get started with the proverbial risk disclosure. So we don't need to read every word of this out loud, but do take a moment to read what's on your screen. And I think the key element here is that there is risk of loss in trading futures and options or really with any investment. Past performance is no guarantee of future results and that all funds committed should be purely risk capital. Uh, calls and puts and buying and selling and premiums and all that good stuff. So what are options? They are simply financial tools or instruments associated with commodities, assets, stocks, and they are bought and sold in the anticipation of price movement within that underlying asset. And we're gonna look at an example. And then we're also going to get quite a bit deeper with some more advanced strategies. So sit tight here, calls and puts. They are the right, not the obligation. And with a call, it's the obligation, or the right, not the obligation to buy an underlying asset. A put is the right, not obligation to sell an underlying asset. And at what price? Well, that's called the strike price. That's where the option can be exercised. And then don't worry, we're gonna look at an example. And what price do options trade at? That's called the premium. Premium is either paid by the buyer of an option or collected by the seller. And they all have a time till expiration. And we're going to look at that as well. So remember the buyer is said to be long the option will pay the premium to the seller. And the seller who is short the option will collect the premium from the buyer. Here's an example looking at land. Let's look at real estate. Land is worth a hundred grand, this nice piece of land here. And the owner sells you the right to buy that land at $110,000 in less than a year. So you pay $8,000 for that right to buy at 110, that's the premium. At what price? Well, that the strike price is 110,000. The premium is 8,000. Expiration is one year. What happens if nine months later that land is now worth 135,000? Well, your option is said to be in the money. It has intrinsic value of 25,000. Well, why is that? Well, you own something that gives you the ability to buy this land at 110,000, even though it's worth 135,000. So that is the definition of intrinsic value. So at that point, you might tap that, uh, the shoulder of the person who sold you that option, and you might wanna exercise your right to buy at 110,000. And what does that look like? Is that a gain or a loss? And if so, how much? Well, there's 25,000 of intrinsic value minus the 8,000 in premium that you paid. So that would be a $17,000 gain. Now, what about the option seller? Well, your gain is the seller's loss in this case. 25,000 in land depreciation was missed out on, but they did receive the 8,000 in premium that you paid, and that equals the 17,000 loss. Now, there are two things here, time value and intrinsic value to keep, keep in mind. Any option that's out of the money, the premium represents all time value, and an option that is in the money, the premium represents time value plus the intrinsic value. So this is what that looks like. And that formula is um, sort of uh, one of those things that no matter how you move those uh, variables around, it's always going to work. So very simple formula. And let's look at a little bit more uh, in depth with our example here. So when that, 110,000 strike price call was uh, trading for 8,000. The land was, wor was worth 100,000. So it was $10,000 out of the money and it had no intrinsic value. 
So therefore their premium represented all time value. So here's, here's what that looks like on a graph. I'll just briefly point this out. So here's the strike price of a call option here. And if the value of the underlying asset is less than the strike price, then it's going to be out of the money and have no intrinsic value, as you can tell here. So if something's uh, worth $25 and you have the ability to buy it for $30, uh, that is out of the money by $5. You wouldn't exercise your right to buy at 30 if you could buy down here at 25. So that's what that looks like on a graph. Let me see if I can erase that and get to the next slide. So what about nine months later when the land was trading at $135,000? The $110,000 call was in the money by $25,000 and that was the intrinsic value. So that's what it looks like on the graph and I don't need to grab the highlighter, I think you get it. So it's in the money. So if you have the ability to buy something here at 110,000, even though it's trading here at 135,000, then that option is in the money and it has intrinsic value. Now remember in our example, uh, the only nine months had passed in our example. So what, what happens here with those three months of time? What does that mean? Well, in reality, the premium would be more than just the intrinsic value of 25,000 because there's time left. And let's just throw out a wild guess and say the time value might be worth $3,000 at that point. So therefore the premium would be intrinsic value of 25,000 plus the time value of 3,000 and that would equal a total premium of $28,000. So hopefully that makes sense. Now let's look at something here real quickly, stock options. So the key point here is that one stock option represents 100 shares of stock. Now, if you wanted to buy 100 shares of say Google at 1200 a share, that would cost $120,000. However, using an option, Let's say the 1200 call was trading at 50. Remember there's hundred shares, so that's $5,000. So the buyer would then own the right to buy hundred shares of Google at 1200. And the seller of that option would be obligated to sell 100 shares of Google at 1200. 